in this video, we are going to talk about bike racks. <laughs> now, I actually chose three other bike racks before I ended up sticking with this one. So we're going to talk about the three of them that I chose that I didn't keep, why I didn't keep them. And then we're going to talk about this one, the mods that I had to do to make it work the best and why I decided to keep it. Let's get into it. When I first ordered my bike through Aventon, I had it shipped to a local bike shop where they put it together for me. And at that time, we had just come up to our cabin up here to spend uh, like two weeks. And then they said my bike was completed. So I had to drive back down to Chicago and pick up the bike, but I didn't have a bike rack. So the very first bike that I picked up was the Thule Easy Fold XT bike rack. The bike rack cost about $1,000 and I didn't care because I, I loved a lot of the features that it had, but when we actually put my bike on it, the, the rails where the tires sit seemed too small. Plus the straps weren't long enough for it. You were gonna have to buy those additionally. Well, I was just coming to get my bike and bring it back up. So we did put the bike on that rack and take it from the bike shop and I, and I went right back to REI to get another one that would fit the bike better. I was able to trade it in for a Thule T2 Pro. And what I liked about that was, and it was about the same price, I think like a hundred bucks cheaper. And what I liked about that rack was that it had the bigger baskets for the, for the fat tires and it actually worked. And I used that rack for about two weeks, but here was the problem that I found out. When you connect it to your bike, it has a hook that, la that hooks down on the front tire. And for that, some people have to take their front fender off. I like to change my bike up where I have the fender on sometimes, sometimes I have it off. And, but I, I was able to, to hook it onto the front tire and cinch it down. But no matter how I positioned it, it would rub against the front fork on my bike. I'm doing this recording and there is a deer right there. All right, now this deer is watching me do this video. That's kind of weird. And I don't know how to take it, but we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out and try to keep going. Another issue I had with the uh, Thule T2 uh, rack was that it was set up for two bikes and I only had one. So I would constantly have to work my way around the second one to lift the 73 pound bike onto the rack to get it on there. Besides that, if that thing was just set up for one bike, I probably would have kept it if I could have figured out a way to not make that, that clamp rub against my front fork. And I tried different things. I put like tape on it. Uh, I tried to put like a little rubber piece, but like the vibration of traveling would make it move. And then I would, and then it would end up scratching my fork anyway. So at that point it had rubbed off the zoom part of the zoom sticker. I decided to return the Thule bike rack and go ahead and get one at Harbor Freight. <laughs> now their bike rack is a motorcycle rack. It's going to hold 400 pounds. So I ended up buying one from there. It was about 130 bucks. I just wanted to be able to like keep my fenders on, not damage the bike while I'm, tra while I'm traveling with it. Came here to the cabin, put it together, right? It was super easy. To, it was super quick. There's not much to it. But one of the issues that I had, oh, it also had a ramp. So for those that are um, older or, or just didn't want to lift up a 73 pound bike onto a rack, then it had a ramp and you could just pull it up onto it. I thought that was pretty cool. Got me some ratchet straps and I'm like, all right, we're good to go. When I put the bike on top of the rack, I, I wasn't able to sink it into the rack because it didn't have any pins that you could make adjustments to. So I took it back the next day. Why can't I get a simple bike rack to work for my bike and keep the fenders on it? I decided to start searching on Amazon on different motorcycle racks uh, that would hold one, one bike, one, e-bike, motorcycle, whatever. And I found one. I'm going to put the link in the description on the one that I chose. And then it came in and I ended up putting it together. Also super simple. Uh, there were no directions to it, but I was able to figure it out. And at that point I had to make some adjustments to it. By having these adjustable pins, I'm able to make the tires sink down in between the rack to give it more stability when traveling. This one was not there. So I ended up taking a drill, measuring it out, and then just kind of drilled holes right in there, slid these pins in, and I was able to lower it to the point that I wanted to. It was like a you know, 10, 15 minute process. So it wasn't bad. I think a drill pit cost me like nine bucks. This thing was like 132. So I still have very little money into it. 
And that wasn't really the concern. I just wanted to be able to travel with this thing the way that I want to travel with it without it doing any damage to the bike. I damage it up enough. Now, I didn't have to make any adjustments to the pins over here on this side. And the neat part is, is I can have the bike either way. So a lot of the times I travel, well, not a lot of the times, all the time I travel with my battery and my bike. I know, I know, but that's just how I do it. It's how I like it. Never had an issue. With that in mind, I can either have the bike with the front facing the passenger, or I can switch it around and have it where it's facing the driver's side. It just depends. And it just depends on really how I throw it onto the rack. This one also has a, uh, has a ramp, but I, I have no issue just throwing it on there. I figured the ramp would be kind of in my way. It connects right here. And I just didn't install it when I put the ramp, when I put the bike ramp together, because I knew I didn't need it. I didn't want it for right now. I still have it in the future if I decide that I want to use it. Then I can just slap the ramp on there, roll the bike up, and it'd be super easy. And then all I have to do is tie it down. Also to keep from damaging the bike, I ended up getting these, these tie down slips that just wrap around your handlebars so that I'm not putting these hooks right onto the metal. Here you can see I just have the basic tie down clamps. These are good enough. You don't need the ratchet kind, not for, not for your bike. For security while traveling, I just have a bike lock hooked to the frame. Like with anything, there's some sacrifices that had to be made with this rack. I'm not able to open my tailgate. It also doesn't raise up from the hitch area. So basically, Wherever your hitch is at, it's going to go straight out from there instead of rising up like normal bike hitches do. One good thing is it also makes it very easy and very quick to get this bike on and off the ramp. If you decide to use the ramp, it just connects right here. So you just disconnect it with a couple of wing nuts, bring it over here, put it on there, and you, could, and you can just roll your bike right off of it. You will need to purchase a 24 millimeter socket to get this rack off and on but it does have an anti-wobble device built inside of it. This is how it looks when it comes to you in the package. There were no instructions to this at all. I had to figure it out on my own. So I'm gonna show you real quick. You take this, you slide it in, match it up to the second connector right there. You're good to go. And that's where your bolt goes in and tightens up. And what that does is it pushes it next to the side of the actual hitch, which keeps it from vibrating and wobbling now for me, this rack has been ideal. And I know that there's other racks out there, like you know, you have the one up, you have the Hollywood racks, and I get that. A lot of you guys have more than one bike. And I know one up does a single bike, but they also, they come up and I've seen where people either have to shave their fenders off or take their fenders off. I mean, I know mine are off right now, but they're not always off. And I wanna have that ability to have them on or have them off without having to modify them at all. So for me, this rack works best. So if you're looking for a budget rack and you only have one bike, this is a very simple and easy process for you to use to get your bike from one place to another. Um, I'll leave a link in the description on the bike, uh, the straps that I use on the handlebars and also the straps that I use to connect it to the, uh, to the bike rack. Uh, any bike lock will work, but I mean, I'll put, you, I'll put in the one that I uh, use for my bike as well. Hey, can y'all keep a secret? I'm gonna have to get another rack and here's why. There is a new e-bike company and they're sending me their e-bike, their fat tire e-bike to test against my adventure. Are you kidding me? So now I'm gonna end up needing a bike rack for two heavy bikes. So in the description, go ahead and tell me which bikes that if you have more than one bike, which bike racks that you're using, what you love about them, because that's just gonna help me figure out what to get for my uh for when I get that other bike and I'm bringing it up to places to test it out. In a video coming up, you'll I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna do first review, but apparently this bike will do 40 miles on throttle alone and 70 miles with one charge using pedal assist. So go ahead, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and that way you'll know as soon as I upload that video, because I wanna see how it's gonna do against that bad boy. But I tell you what, that kind of covers it for this one. Until then, enjoy the ride and thanks for watching.